even with its US future in limbo, DJI keeps releasing impressive drones. Its latest is the Neo 2, a lightweight and inexpensive model aimed at hobbyists and creators. It's an upgraded version of the Neo, an immensely popular drone in the US and elsewhere. The new model is equally safe and easy to fly thanks to the shrouded props, palm takeoff and voice control. DJI didn't just tack on a number and call it a day though. The Leo 2 is loaded with new features like LiDAR obstacle detection, improved video quality and longer battery life, all at just a slightly higher price. The Neo wasn't perfect as the propellers on that model emitted a banshee-like scream. The lack of obstacle detection and low battery life also wasn't ideal. Has the new model solved these problems? Mostly yes. The Neo 2 is now nearly a perfect personal drone. The Neo 2 has the same tiny size as before, but there are some key updates. A new LiDAR sensor detects forward obstacles and is a surprisingly high-tech addition for such a cheap drone. It also has a small new display showing the current shot mode like follow or droney. The gimbal has been upgraded and can now rotate, so the camera will stay level even during extreme maneuvers. The Neo 2 has three new buttons on the side along with two omnidirectional sensors. On top of helping it avoid obstacles, they improve stability in untextured or non-GPS environments like indoors and over water. Finally, if you buy a Neo 2 with an optional controller, it includes a removable digital transceiver with a pair of antennas. With all those changes, the Neo 2 is a bit heavier than before at 160 grams compared to 135 grams for the Neo. It's still small enough to slide into a pocket and easily under the 250 gram weight required for drone registration. A key new Neo 2 feature is gesture control. To use it, wave a hand up, down or sideways to make it climb and bank. Move two hands apart or together to make it approach or move away, like pinching to zoom in the air, clench a fist to stop it, and hold out your palm to land. Along with the ability to wave your hands, the Neo 2 offers other ways to fly, like palm takeoff. After selecting the flight mode, shown on the new display and audibly announced, you can launch the Neo 2 from your hand by pressing the takeoff button or using voice control. It will then execute the chosen mode, fly back to you, and land on your outstretched palm. Smartphone control is also available for manual flight. Wi-Fi range has been extended by 10 times to 550 yards or so, compared to just 55 yards for the Neo. However, for that range, you need a clear signal path with no obstacles between you and the drone. For more precise flight and longer range of up to 6 miles, the Neo 2 supports DJI's controllers as well. And FPV flying is still an option when using DJI's headsets and FPV controllers. The Neo 3's Quick Shots repertoire has been updated as well. A fun new mode is the Hitchcock Zoom. When activated, the drone backs away while zooming in at the same time, creating a trippy perspective effect you might have seen in Vertigo and Jaws. Again, this feature is unique to the Neo 2 in DJI's lineup. It's compatible with DJI's microphones, including the Mic 2, Mic 3 and Mic Mini. Because the Neo 2 is much quieter than before, Sound quality is noticeably improved when using any of these microphones. Onboard storage has been boosted from 22 to 49 gigabytes, letting you record up to 175 minutes of 4K video, and DJI more than doubled the Wi-Fi transfer speeds. The Neo 2 retains the Neo's toughness and protection, but it can now fly around obstacles instead of just plowing through them, thanks to the LiDAR and sensors. To test that, I used it to follow subjects around trees, buildings, and other obstacles. First, I engaged the Active Track Follow feature and used the Trace Mode steering wheel to follow subjects from the front, sides, and back. When flying forward, the Neo 2 avoided most obstacles using its LiDAR while swooping cinematically around trees and branches. It occasionally failed to detect small twigs and leaves, but unlike open prop DJI drones, it usually flew through them without incident. With fewer omni sensors than other DJI drones, the Neo 2 isn't as good at avoiding obstacles to the sides and rear though. So if you're using it to vlog while walking or biking, it's best to make sure there's nothing in the way. With a top speed of just 18 miles per hour, the original Neo was so slow that it could barely track a bike. 
Luckily, the Neo 2 is much faster with speeds up to 27 miles per hour in follow mode and even has a special bicycle tracking mode. I tested that on an e-bike and it easily kept up with me while also avoiding obstacles in the forward direction. Again though, you need to be extra wary of things like trees when it's flying backwards or sideways. The Neo 2 is as agile as ever, so the extra velocity makes it a better FPV drone. That, plus the low price, makes it a good first drone for anyone looking to get into FPV flying. In my review of the Neo, I likened the prop noise to a banshee howl, but the decibel level and pinch are now tolerable even indoors. I flew it around at a party without complaint, and it didn't draw much attention in a public park either. The only negative is the high pitch, which can carry 100 yards or more. With a new 12 megapixel half inch sensor camera, video quality is excellent for the price range. The Neo 2 supports 4K at up to 60 frames per second or 100 frames per second in slow mo mode rather than just 30 frames per second as before. It also has an f2 instead of an f2.8 iris to let in more light. With those updates, it offers sharper and more color accurate video and photos than the Neo. There are, of course, some sacrifices at that price. The small sensor means that the Neo 2 has mediocre low light capability with pronounced grain at the maximum ISO 12800 rating and noticeable even at ISO 3200. Unlike the $400 flip, the Neo 2 has no 10-bit D-Log-M capability so over or underexposed video is harder to correct. With those issues, video and photos from the Neo 2 aren't quite good enough for professional work. However, it's excellent for social media users, hobbyists and content creators delivering smartphone quality aerial shots. Availability of the Neo 2 in the US still isn't known as the company is facing a potential ban at the end of the year. However, the Neo 2 effectively has no competition at its price point, which is expected to be around $250. The Hover Air X1 is the only name brand alternative, but costs twice as much. That model offers solid follow me capabilities for activities like biking and hiking. Feature wise though, it pales in comparison to the Neo 2 with inferior video quality, battery life, range, and obstacle detection. DJI's Neo 2 is not just the best personal drone, it's the best tech product I've seen in a while, period. It retains everything I liked about the Neo, especially the ease of use and safety features. On top of that, it adds a host of useful functions like obstacle detection and, thank goodness, lower noise levels. With all that, the Neo 2 performs the rare trick of doing much more than I expected for a lot less money. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe.